Okay, one of the reasons for using a lot of pellets in a pellet test is because you have different conditions that your barrel goes through after it's clean. There's three conditions. The first condition is a clean bore. The second condition is a fouled bore. And the third condition is a dirty bore. Now this phase could start out something like this. Not all rifles, but you fire your first five shots and you notice that the groups are kind of wide. Then you fire a couple more sets and you notice that the groups tighten up and they're real consistent several times or several sets of five and I've given you an ex just an example here from here to here but you notice that there's some consistency and accuracy and the groups are all the same and they're consistent and then all of a sudden your accuracy falls off and your groups widen up like this so that can throw off you know your mill dot settings and everything like that so what you want to do when you sight in your rifle what I would do is I wouldn't sight it in for these first few shots here but I would sight in the rifle during the fouling stage right here because the next time you hunt or do something you want the barrel in its fouled state so when you take that shot you're getting the consistency here so I would I would sight in the rifle after a few shots rather than just right away here so anyway I wanted to give you that tip because of the fact that uh, to do a real pellet test in any air rifle you need to fire a lot of shots and there's a lot of important tips I could tell you uh, like one of them is uh, break in the rifle first fire about 500 shots 250 whatever you feel is a good break in but if you if you notice a good break in usually what happens is uh, your groups tighten up so that's one of the signs of uh, an air rifle breaking in but what I would do is stick with one really good pellet for a long time and not shoot all these other brands so that you can find out really what the consistency of that pellet is and yes you're gonna have to spend some money but it's worth it in the end because if you fire thousands of rounds like field target guys do and you're weighing your pellets you're doing everything on your part that you can over time you know what the best pellet is for your rifle because you shoot hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds and you can find that uh, magic pellet as Tom Gaylord was saying finding that right pellet and also shooting that rifle many many times so that you can break it in because it does get better with the break in and so does the trigger so I just thought I'd uh, share that important tip with you guys online make sure you clean the barrel and run it through the following stages what I like to do with new pellets myself I know it's kind of expensive but what I do is when I'm when I want to switch pellets I'll repeat the whole process I'll clean the bore and I'll suffer and lose some sacrifice shots right here out of the bore I'll have a few that go kind of wide and then they'll start tightening up again and that's my experience with a lot of rifles too so my RWS 34 I've been shooting that for 20 years now and I've always went through this routine right here uh, at least five sets of five I go through that routine uh, if you want to know uh, other people that have used this routine many many years ago even decades ago uh, the Can Canadian marksmanship program with Daisy 853s and stuff like that up in Canada they had a cadet program and they would always go by sets of five and uh, they would pick their pellets by sets of five because uh, they they would see the consistency or what they would do is just shoot the whole tin and uh, you know just take 500 rounds and just stick with it for a couple weeks and uh, keep track of all the paper targets like for instance if these were real paper targets you would stack them one upon it one upon another keep track of your shot counts and then go back through all the papers and do research and find out why is this group like this why is this group like this what's happening here you know do I have to adjust my click values because this group moved up here and and so on and so on there's so there's a lot of research you can do but in order to have the research on your rifle and the pellets you have to fire a lot of pellets you can't just do this uh, three shot Charlie thing and then put another pellet in and say well that pellet wasn't good so I'm going to try another one so you want to try all pellets at all distances 
at all speeds, meaning if you have a pump rifle or something with adjustable power, try all speeds. So all speeds, all distances. And if you're doing shots out in uh, the yard or something, I would wait until the cool of the day, like around 5 o'clock or 6, you know, when the wind dies down, when, it, when it's kind of calm, not too hot of weather, you know, so you can do a test and you got almost perfect conditions where you can do these kind of uh, shot group tests and stuff like that. And uh, you want to do them on a good table that's got sandbags on it that doesn't wobble or wiggle. And uh, you want to have some kind of bench rest set up that's comfortable for you. You want, to, you want to have something that's comfortable if you're doing an accuracy test. So it's more important that you're comfortable because then you're going to take good shots. So you just want to remember that. But anyway, thanks for watching, you guys.